Warning, the outcome of this video will result in you drawing closest to Allah and improving your religion. Viewer discretion is advised. Oh, 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 oh SQ, SQ, Astaghfirullah, he has no hayat, talk about sex. Wow, if I'm not going to talk to you about it, who is, huh? Your friend, your friend at school, who's polluting your child's mind, they're going to talk to him about sex, sure. And they're learning about it from them too. And they're learning all the ins and outs and intricacies of sex from them and not from a Muslim who's been through it all. But you would rather close your eyes, hide under the covers, and just pray that the boogeyman leaves. The boogeyman ain't going nowhere, son. They're here to stay. And if we're not going to talk about these issues that are taboo or difficult to talk about, who will? Because your children, whether you've had a conversation with them about the birds and the bees and about sex, they know about it. Way of Life SQ, keeping it a hundred. Assalamu alaikum, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm so grateful, thankful, and <laughs> that you decide to spend some of your time here with me today. I'm addicted to committing zina. Look, originally the title of this was going to be called How Zina Ruined My Life. But I think that's going to be a separate video because it ruined my life in a way that's un undescribable in just one video. So inshallah, I'm going to do a separate series from that. Uh, I did the music video over here. Not a music video like that, but how music led me to Islam. If you haven't seen that video, go watch that. I got a lot of positive comments from you guys about that video. I'm happy that it helped you all out. If you have any tips on how to quit music or your struggles with music, tell me in the comment section below on that video because I would love to connect with you over there. I read and respond to all comments so you already know. Now, Getting to this topic right now, how I'm addicted to zina. Well, at least I was addicted to zina, and not from the classical way that you might think, right? When you think of addiction to zina, it sounds like you're, you know, a nympho or something like that, you know what I mean? Like you're a nymphomaniac and you're addicted to sex, and it wasn't like that. It was addicted to the process that was associated with zina. The process of dating people and talking to people and taking people out, spending money on them, bragging to your friends, showing friends the pictures of the girls you're talking to. It was an overall process that I was addicted to. You see, this is, I'm going to, again, I'm, I'm just, I feel like with these videos, I'm pulling back the curtain of things that you don't know and you don't see. And I'm hoping that you would learn from my mistakes. You see, when I say I was addicted to Zina, it was, I was addicted to harming people as well. I was addicted to, you know, bragging to people about how many bodies I've caught. Because that's what it's all about. No one really cares about, you know, the zina process itself. No one's asking you about intimate questions about how things were. It's just, you know, how many bodies have you caught? And I remember being addicted to competing with people. Wallahi, it's sad. Zina now has become a competition amongst people. It's a competition amongst my peers at the time. You know, how many bodies you caught? Oh, did you catch another body? Oh, how many though? How many girls have you slept with? These were real questions, real conversations that used to happen. And not just in locker rooms, but in the workplace as well. And I remember, I remember people lying about how many bodies they caught. And I remember people telling me how many bodies they had and how many girls they slept with, this and that, just so that I, in my mind, before I knew they were lying, this man, I need to step my game up. I was just like, yo, I need to really catch more bodies so I could even compete with them. I find out they were all lying. They were actually still virgins. Isn't that something? But I was busy competing for the dunya. I was competing for numbers that are not numbers that you should be proud of. How many bodies you caught? Like, what are we, murdering people? I mean, let's be serious over here. How many bodies you caught? What is this? Do you know how many innocent people we had to hurt to catch those bodies? You think these girls were like loose? You think these girls were like, a stuck for Allah, like prostitutes or something? No. They were good people that we ruined and we scarred and we, you know, traumatized. We gave them, you know, uh, you know, problems for the rest of their lives. Emotional trust issues, psychological trust issues, abandonment issues, issues that I've created and caused in so many women. Why? For my thirst of the dunya, for my thirst of catching a body. The reason I'm sharing this with you is because there's a lot of you guys out there, a lot of youngsters, you know, my, the people who watch this channel are a range of people. I remember one brother was just like, I'm unsubscribing. Why is that? I'm unsubscribing because my little children watch you and you were talking about sleeping with a prostitute. My man, 
This channel is an Islamic channel. My range of, of audience is from the ages of 13 to 30. You feel me? I am going to talk about losing your virginity. I am going to talk about sleeping with people. I'm also going to talk about GSE exams. I'm also going to be talking about marital issues. I'm also going to be talking about, you know, having children. You know what I mean? Like, you have to understand that this channel is designed to help people, you know, discover and develop their own Islamic identities. That's what this channel is all about. So the outcome of this video is going to make you realize that you are chasing something that is fake. You're only earning more sin against yourself. You're only harming other people. But it is not the sex that you're addicted to. Oh, askew, askew. Astaghfirullah, he has no haya. Talk about sex. Wow. If I'm not going to talk to you about it, who is, huh? Your friend, your friend at school, who's polluting your child's mind, they're going to talk to you about sex? Sure. And they're learning about it from them too. And they're learning all the ins and outs and intricacies of sex from them. And not from a Muslim who's been through it all. But you would rather close your eyes, hide under the covers and just pray that the boogeyman leaves. The boogeyman ain't going nowhere, son. They're here to stay. And if we're not going to talk about these issues that are taboo or difficult to talk about, who will? Because your children, whether you've had a conversation with them about the birds and the bees and about sex, they know about it. And believe me, if you haven't taught them about sex and they know about it, the question you need to ask yourself is, where's their source of information? Isn't it better that we are talking about it? Isn't it better that they're learning from this? I digress. Tell me in the comment section below, by the way, your thoughts about that. Nonetheless, I'm telling you right now that, you know, like, I was addicted to the process of sex, a process of zina, the, 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 the cool, the chase that comes with it. And a lot of you guys are out there too. The same thing. But I promise you, zina is something empty. Once you commit it, and girls, if you're out there, please protect yourself. There's a lot of dudes out there who will come, you know, and, 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 and looking good, making it seem like they love you, they care about you, but they're trying to catch a body. And you are that body. That's just the facts of the matter. I'm sorry if I'm being so direct with you, but the fact of the matter is that a lot of dudes are just trying to catch a body and you're just another victim on their list. And when they're done, they're going to brag to their friend about you. You send them a picture, they're going to show it to their friends. That's just the truth. They're going to show it to their homies. Tell me that's not the truth. How many of you out there have seen pictures of your friends' girls that they're talking to? How many of you have seen pictures, nude pictures, pictures that were only for their eyes, but they've shown it to you? How many, huh? How does that happen? Because when a girl sends you a picture, it's really, yeah, the girl sent it with the intention for you, but the truth of the matter is that it's going to get exposed. So, so, so my sisters out there, please don't be naive. Don't be naive. Don't listen to what they're saying. The truth is they're going to show people. They're going to show people and you want to be careful that that doesn't happen. That doesn't mean, you know, you take it at an angle that your face doesn't show. <laughs> That's not what it means. You don't put it with an emoji on your face. That's not what it means. It means you restrain and refrain yourself from people uh, who want things like this from you. Because if a person loves you, they'll come talk to your dad. That's just the truth of the matter. I know that sounds kind of corny. I know that sounds, it doesn't sound fun, but the truth of the matter is this that they will come and talk to your parents and approach you in a respectful manner. They'll come through the front door, not through the window. You feel me? They're going to come to the front door and come to your hand respectfully, showing everything that they are, talking to you correctly, coming to you correctly. But subhanAllah, the, the media and, and, and movies and songs and all these things has warped my, our, our understandings of what love is, of how love should be. It should be something dangerous that we run away together and we fight against our parents. It shouldn't be that way. If you do care about someone and your parents, you know, your parents should know about them and your parents should have a soft enough heart to realize that, hey, let me not make this love story difficult between these people. Let me facilitate this love story. Let me get their nikah done. Isn't that the goal? Isn't that the dream? Don't you wish people thought like that? You see, people wonder, SK, what's the point of all this? Why do you make these videos? My goal is to change your mindset. And you know, that's going to take a long time. I'm in this for the long haul. This is not about one video or one daily video. It's about changing your mindset, which is going to take some time. That's my mission. I want to change your mindset. That's the goal. I don't want to, you know, like, I want to change how you think. I want to change how you view things and perceive. And a lot of you out there have already begun on that journey. So when I say that I was addicted to zina, it's not the sex that we were addicted to. And all of those out there who are addicted to committing zina, it is not necessarily the sex that you're addicted to. 
It is a relationship that you've made with the entire process. But that only goes to show you one thing, friends, that there's something missing inside you and I, that you and I are chasing this thing that doesn't exist. Zina is not a real thing. It's a real sin, but it doesn't give you real fulfillment inside. We're missing something on the inside. We're broken on the inside. We're hollow on the inside. And Zina is giving us that temporary relief. So I'm challenging you as I challenge myself to ask myself, why am I addicted to this? Why am I using Zina as a coping mechanism? Why am I using it as a band-aid? Why am I using it as a healing tool? Because Zina is only causing me harm. It's only causing me issues. So I want to know, why are you and I addicted to Zina? What state of mind are we in? What state of feeling are we in that we're using Zina to get out of that feeling? And then let's instead replace it with the words of Allah, some Quran, some positive good deeds, or at least these videos. I appreciate you guys watching this so much. Guys, some major, major things happening. Guys, I'm going to Vegas this Friday, inshallah. These are daily videos, so, you know, keep up. <laughs> you know what I mean? Keep up. I'm going to Vegas this Friday, inshallah. I'm going to make a lot of social experiments, inshallah. I'm doing some Quran social experiments, some Islamic quizzes to non-Muslims over there uh, with some AirPods and um, Apple Watch giveaways and stuff like that. So stay tuned for that. I have a major, major announcement coming up on a 24-hour only video. So stay tuned for that as well too. Merch is coming soon too, guys, only because I need to afford these things. And honestly, it's coming out of my salary and my wife is hating me right now. So please support the merch when I drop it. It really, really means the world to me. Love you all for the sake of Allah. And I pray that Allah SWT blesses you and you have a beautiful and blessed day moving forward. Until next time, I'm out.